one. Bears on pace to go what three and fourteen? <laughs> Actually, they're on pace to go zero and seven. Yeah, I say zero and I say one and sixteen. Well, they they play the the second worst team in the league tomorrow. Man, the Bears are terrible. Man. Why are they terrible? Well, where should we start? I'd say they're terrible because the fans are too loyal. I'm sorry. I can't continue. I mean, I don't spend no money on the Bears. I don't know about you. I won't buy a Be- I used to, but I won't buy a Bears hat. I won't buy a Bears jersey. If it ain't free, then it ain't free. for me. <laughs> and because the reason is, I mean, you the football man. You tell me, what, why, they, why do they suck? The Bears organization is run like a mom and pop shop. <laughs> I mean, truth, <laughs> truth, truth hurts. Truth does hurt. Truth does hurt. You gotta dig into that. The Bears organization is ran like a mom and pop shop. Yeah. Uh, They got they got a new president. Uh, Got him in this year. Got a new general manager. He's made some uh, trading that draft pick. If Bryce Young was two inches taller, the Bears would have picked him. If that dude from USC who just tore up Colorado earlier today. If he was eligible, they would have traded Fields without a question. I'm willing to bet some money on that. Um, so, I so, don't know. From what you've seen, would you agree with me if you say, if I say, which I have said, that Caleb Williams is better than Justin Fields right now? Hell, C.J. Stroud is better than Justin Fields right now. C.J. Stroud has more 200 yard, two or 300 yard passing games than Fields, and he's only been in the league, what, three games? Make it make okay. sense. So with that being said, tomorrow Akeem Hunter is hired GM of the Bears. What do you do with this season with this team? Tank. I completely agree. Tank. Tank. Start trading for any picks you can get. Fire sale. Fire sale. Let this coach go ahead and play this one out. Uh, you let the coach let the coach finish it yeah, out. Let the coach finish it out. And then you have to figure out what players you have on the on the team. What as Dion says, what dogs you got. So you figure out what dogs you got and then you figure out what your identity Are there is gonna any be. Dogs on this team? I got a couple. Who? I got a couple. Um the receiver, I like him. He's nice. I I, I like the receiver except uh Claypool. Uh you know, DJ Moore or Russell? Yeah, I, I like them both. Him and him and Mooney, they're nice. They're nice. I like Commit, he's good. You know, you just need somebody who can deal deal them the ball. But you're going to keep them, though? Yeah, they, they, they solid. They solid. They solid. If you tanking, then you rebuild it. If yeah. you rebuild it, why would you yeah. keep a that, that's fine. DJ Moore? I would take them, but I will build my team through the O-line and D-line. I'll build a team just like how the Eagles have. So then they got a so solid O-line, solid D-line. So them, DJ Moore, though, will be on the trading block. No, we're going to keep him. We need, we need somebody to catch the ball. I mean, what am I? We ain't trying to win. But we got they, the they got Carolina's pick next year. The Bears gonna have a top five pick. If Carolina continues to suck, they have another top five pick. <laughs> so they'll have two top five picks. Um, uh, Troop hurts, it really does. Uh, but you go out and you gotta build you an identity. I mean, if it's, I mean, truth be told, Jalen Carter playing with the Eagles right now. He's doing pretty well, and he was. Well, he was the best player in the draft. They could have took him. And we would have been absolutely okay with that. What about the people who say Justin Fields is just in the wrong system? What do you say to them? This is the second offensive coordinator? Yes, I believe so. All right. Okay. As a GM, you get two coaches. You screw up on two coaches, you out of there, right? Yeah. Now the head coach... You get to change quarterbacks once, maybe twice. Now the quarterback. Okay, you get a different coach. And still the same result. It's the quarterback. Yeah, it's the, 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 line, the line plays a big role into it as well, but um, it's the difference between reading the coverages and understanding the coverages. Hey, look, man, at this point, 
The Bears are either cursed or trying to lose on purpose. I'm convinced. I don't know which one. They either cursed or trying to lose on purpose. I don't understand, man. I ain't putting no more energy into that. What score to the Kansas City game last week? A lot to a little? <sighs> yeah, a lot, yeah to. A, lot, a lot to a little. That what about tells you the gap from Kansas City and the Bears. It's a wide, wide freaking gap. I mean, It's beyond the quarterback. I mean, the Packers Packers suck. are good. They suck. Packers are Packers are they're better than the Bears. Their Packers are going to be right. That was my point. You see what they did to the Bears, and they're not even that good. They, Packers going to be all right. You think the Packers going to be good? Going to make the playoff? Let's see. They take seven. So, we'll say Detroit's one. We got San Francisco, Philly, Dallas. Who's in the south? Um, New Orleans. New Orleans, I think, is leading. Now. New Orleans. Um, then, can you get somebody from the north? We need six. So that give that gives you not Minnesota, Detroit, maybe, and maybe another team from the south or New York. That's seven. There you go. So yeah, they got a shot. They got a shot. I don't know. My point was they're not that good to make the Bears look that bad. That's true. So that, that the Bears just bad, like they. Terrible. But that's just that's organizational structure. Even when you take, when you look at Green Bay last year, their defense was freaking good. Are you taking them over Denver? Who? The Bears. No. They can't beat Denver at home, and they just nope. gave up seventy points. No. 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 Then Denver, they. So they got talent. So Bears you know don't. it's a bar, that's gonna pay anybody tab if the Bears. Lose. Did you see that? We need to find that bar. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna look it up. We need to find that bar. We can eat free. We can drink for free. <laughs> Shoot. We gonna have to go. I hope they got good wings. Yeah, me too. I was on a, on a diet too, but I would break the diet that day. But yeah, so or, bad organization. Bad organization. We don't spend too much time man. on the Bears though, because they're not even worth, not even worth my time. We know the truth about them. It hurts. And it does hurt. They suck. You know, they suck, and I was rooting for them. I was rooting for them. I wasn't. And I what are they going to do? Now, let's see. What should we talk about? What? We're going to get into college football, since we're on football. The primetime mania, Deion Sanders. Now, I... What do you think about what do you think about Deion Sanders? Well, a marketing genius. Marketing genius. That's one. I mean, we know we know what he he did on the field. We know what he did at Jackson State. We don't need to dive into that. Uh, marketing genius. Um, we know he's relatable to what, 70 80 percent kids on the team are African American. He's relatable. Um, in regard from a business standpoint. You can, you can overpay for good, but you can't overpay for great. Meaning that the amount of money I think he signed a five-year, thirty million like dollars, yeah. Some, somewhere, somewhere. First three games, Colorado did ninety million in revenue. They're on pace to do two hundred eighty million this year. So, go back to what I said earlier. You can overpay for good, but you can't overpay for great. He's underpaid <laughs> right. as a marketer. So that so I wasn't wrong to call him a good mule then, right? Is he being used? Hey, you know. Um, there's Who's getting pimp, the most out of this? There's, Theon, pimps, there's pimps and there's holes. He is. He ain't uh, the pimp in this He situation. is a great <laughs> hole. And I, I mean that in this term that he's bringing a lot of a lot, lot of light toward, uh, towards the school, and we know the, they, I mean, what they did to the program was, was amazing. They got like 85 new transfers, some, something along those lines. They got a whole new football team, and they're competing. In, I mean, they, they lost to USC today, but we know, they're, we know where they need to get strong at. He knows where they need to get strong at, but uh, the fact that he just keeps bringing light and positivity, and, you know, and the fans are still there. And they're gonna be buying Coach Prime gear. I know he's getting a, he's getting a cut of that too. Of course, 
No, a lot of commercials too. Yeah. And um, I just feel like, well, I think he, I think he did a great job. I do think he's getting used like a mule, and he should have saw that coming. I don't know how they didn't see that coming. I would have demanded more money. You know what I'm saying? But what about him using Jackson State, or I should say, like? I feel like he used it as like a stepping stone, and we all use something for a stepping stone. Yeah, I know. We all use something. I'm for not, a stone. you know, condemning him or nothing for that. I'm just saying, you know, Colorado. If it wasn't for Deion Sanders, Lil Wayne wouldn't be having nothing to do with Colorado. Lil Wayne wouldn't know what Colorado was on the map. Right. Neither would T.O. or Michael Irvin. None of them would give a shit about Colorado if it wasn't for him. So it's like, what? So all this energy is being put into this whole Deion, this whole celebrity shit. The goal is to put cheeks in seats and viewers on TV. But you know where I'm going with this. Mm Mm-hmm. Did he also use the emotions of black people? By going to the HBCU and saying it was his call and that he was going to do this and raise that up. No, he had, to, he had to get in somewhere. So nobody was going to bring him on as a head coach with the experience that he had prior to Jackson State. So he had to get in somewhere and he had to do something different. So that's what you know, all the money that he, that he, he brought up. Because in most cases, most good, not just football players, most great athletes are horrible coaches. Right. <laughs> Fucking horrible coaches. Right. Mo so the way he did at Jackson State, I mean he left the pl- he left Jackson State a better place than when he when he got it. He took uh, the players though. Nah, they they got they it's a money business. I'm looking <laughs> at the money. Hey, they got new facility, new Yeah, I feel you know, like they, they they had they had a water crisis, he was able to bring some visibility around that. So I think he did a great job. And I feel like it was a fair trade, like they use fair. each other, like any other type of business deal, you know what I'm saying? Now, this goes back to what I said earlier. You can overpay for good, you can't overpay for great. So I think he was making 300000 there and he was donating half his salary. So what the stuff he was doing at Jackson State, he was underpaid. Oh, of course. He's so, underpaid now. He's underpaid, he's under, underpaid now. And... I don't, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's why I don't really have no beef with him because just for him to even go to Jackson State, go to HBCU, and coach you know a kid, and too. coach, just to him even do that was like a huge step from what we would usually never see and somebody co- do from his stature, you know? But, and, co- um, coach, and coach the kids? Yeah, but um, I, mean, I don't know. Like, the move to Colorado, I, I just feel like, eh. Well, well, I didn't, I wasn't crazy about it, but hey, it's his decision. Well, wherever you go. Because you know why? Because all that money he's bringing in is just going to another white institution. See what I'm saying? Like, everything he was doing at Jackson State that was going towards the, the black institutions, shit, of course, I'm for it. You know what I'm saying? Like, at 100% support. But then when he left, like, he took everything with him. You know what I'm saying? He took players. He took the celebrities with him. <laughs> the celebrities going... Because the celeb, they're not gonna come. To them, not gonna go to the HBCU conference uh, championship game. No, but they're gonna come to Colorado and bring. You know what I'm saying? Now, like you said, how much are they supposed to bring in? Two hundred. Two hundred eighty million, million going to dollars. who? Going towards the university. University of Colorado, which is how many percent black students? Single digits. Well, before last year, I'm sure. That, I'm sure that went up a little bit. It didn't, it didn't go up much. Two percent. Yeah, we can go. We can go with. No, we'll. Hey, we'll go with. Uh, we'll go with eight percent. Four. Four percent of that is athletes. <laughs> no, it's, no, it, no. I'm telling you, it's two percent. Oh. It's two percent. Thirty thousand people there. Yeah, I mean, I just don't know why he's being held. Is is like he's gonna go on the wall next to Obama. If if if. Yeah. Why. If he if he does half of what Nick Saban <laughs> has done in Alabama, he's getting a, he's getting a statue. It's gonna be the Buffalo freaking mascot. I can curse here, right? Yeah. It's gonna be the fucking Buffalo mascot and Prime, with the hat and the glass and the, and, the, and the glasses. Which freaking he came in the locker room in the meeting room one day with the glasses on. Shoot, the company who made the glasses, their sales went up one point two million dollars. It's like 
it, it, it's like, you know, part part of it is the emotional part. Like, it's a little bit of emotional part. But the other part is the freaking money part. Like, he just, he created Money Trail, and he knows how to bring freaking money. And, I mean, of course, yeah. of course, of course, the talent, but, I mean, we we know what's going on on football aspect. But in regards as to the visibility and the revenue, I think what he's doing is second, with his second and none, and nobody has done that before. I mean, no former, no coach, no player. And a lot of coaches are pissed off at him, too. Yeah. A lot of coaches because these coaches, they've been GA, they've been position coaches, they've been – freaking coordinators and still can't get a whip at a job and prime comes in and fucking takes off you know why because and i love it college sports is all about who you can recruit mm -hmm. that other shit really matters man there's a lot of good coaches out there but if you don't got no players you ain't doing shit man. and because of his stature he can recruit and that's what they scared of they know that players is gonna keep coming yeah. to him and most schools have two to three players on the nfl roster you know how many players on the NFL roster? 53. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, I don't know, man. He should have went to. Um, where? He should have went to. Um, where? Somewhere black. Florida State didn't want him. It's, it's Alan Mata. That's the only place he would have well, went he, to. He should have waited. But also, you got to go somewhere where if you got an AD that you work jointly with, with, like you can go to a black school, you go to a white school, but if you clashing heads with your AD and freaking. <laughs> leadership um, leadership team it's not going to be a good fit right if they're black white orange tan who get, who cares but if you got somebody that you hey i need this boom you got the resources and all the you know you got the resource to get things done then well at that point it doesn't matter what color they are then at that point i mean it don't matter to Deion sanders at all i know what color matters Clearly. green <laughs> but that's green. the whole thing why did why did you i feel like he pretended like that did matter with the whole HBCU thing, and we know that that didn't ever matter. You know what I'm saying? And now we can see clearly. That I saw somebody say, "Well, he by helping them black boys, he's helping the community." And I'm like, "What? But they athletes. Like, it's it's a, it's a business. You know what it's I'm a, saying? It's a business. From hey, if you don't, if you're in college, you don't ball. They're gonna get you out of here. Uh, if you don't perform as a coach." They gonna get you out of here. So you have to have the ability to put sheets in the seats. You have, at the end, of, at the end of the day, all, all the stuff you're doing, Prime gotta win. Yeah, just because you get the good, the good recruits. We've seen programs and and football and basketball get all the good recruits and don't produce. You know what happens to those coaches? Get them out of here. So what do you see in the future for Deion Sanders in Colorado? We'll see if he can recruit some linemen. Then if he can recruit some linemen, then he can compete with the Oregon's, the USC's, the Alabama's, the Georgia's. How many years before he can compete with them? Three. You think he can do it? He can't turn around that roster like he did this year. So he has to build on what he has now. So this offseason is going to be huge. Okay. Can he, can it be done? Yeah. But, I, I mean, we don't, we all don't know his grand plan. So, how he's going to go about it. Is there a way that he can use this momentum and this power to actually give back to Hood? Does he claim to be representing the Hood? Any Hoods in Colorado? Any Hoods in Denver? I mean, I think hey. so. I mean, Colorado he gonna... Springs? Doesn't count. It's not a hood there. I've been there. Denver, a few black people there. But if you got to do something locally, then you can branch off. It's like, it's like, is Colorado going to do something in Chicago? No. No. I don't know. I don't have any expectations. I'm just talking. Um, but m meanwhile, remember, his job as a football coach is to win games. Hey, look. He the one that, that got all these people on this. He know how black people are. Maybe he don't get really emotional real quick and jump on something because they think it's like a train. It's, it's you know what I'm saying something that gonna take them somewhere. And, and they shit. But it's just crazy how like all the 
the attention wasn't on the HBCUs. It was just on him because he him. took it all with him. It's like to come, and that's the whole. That's the sad part about it to me. And like now, I can kind of see why those co those HBCU coaches wasn't didn't like him either, mm -hmm. because they know what was gonna happen. He was just gonna get everybody all excited just to move on, and they were right. They was right. I think he does a good job. Like some in some programs, coaches should take the heat. I mean, even you know, Colorado lost today. He should take the heat for it. I mean, instead of you know the players, whatever. So he does a decent job at taking on the heat. It's just as much he brings it on. Yeah, so. I think he did everything right. I, I don't I understand. I don't think he did nothing wrong. I just think it's unfortunate that he couldn't keep that momentum going with the whole HBCU support mm -hmm. because for those three years it was like more support that I've seen, you know, in a long time or ever. Just. Shining the light on HBCUs, you know. I would like to see him at at Howard because Howard has a more of a like if he had a like more solid infrastructure around him. Yeah. I would like to see what he would would have been able to do at a program like that. And yeah, so that yes. was, I think that would have been pretty cool and unique. So while we're still in sports, big trade, Dame Dollar. To Milwaukee. Eastern Conference Finals. Book it. Finals or Eastern Conference Finals? We'll see how they gel together. Definitely. Did you guarantee them in the Eastern Conference Finals? Yeah. So who you got your final four in the East? You got. You got them. Milwaukee. Boston. You got Boston. You got the Heat. You got the Heat? You got the Heat. And who else? James at the strip club still, or is he playing with Philly this year? Uh, they say he's playing with Philly. He's supposed to be playing with Philly. I think he had the strip club still. But, but yeah. I don't know. He said that he wasn't going to play for this we'll, 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 we'll see by We'll, we'll see by the trade deadline. Ooh. We'll see where Drew Holiday goes. We back. We're back. All facts, no format, no cap. True. It hurts. True. It's like body blows. The knockout punch comes. True hurts. We're going to do a quick. We're going to do some top fives. Mm -hmm. Top five, dead or alive. Mm. Put you on the spot. Since we was on football. Top five, no positions, football players of all time. This won't be too hard. 12 in New England. We know who he is. Okay. Brady. Lawrence Taylor. LT. I'm going to run him back at heart. I'm going to go with Jim Brown. Mm hmm So you got Brady, Brown, who else? Jerry Rice. Jerry Rice. That's four. Lawrence Taylor. That's four. Ooh. You probably need, well, I mean, no matter. No matter the position. Five. Let's see. Got some nice running backs out there. You got some, obviously, a lot of quarterbacks out there. You know what? Forget it. I'll go with, I'll go with Joe Montana. And under there, there's one in there. I'm trying to throw a lineman in there, but um, I can. <laughs> that's what I got, guys. Sorry. Oh, we'll take that. Top five most influential athletes. Dead or alive. Ali. Okay. Jim Brown again. MJ. Magic. He's still playing. Ooh. He about being year 22 or 21. LeBron? Yeah. Man. Well, I go with. I guess we can. I'm definitely. Yeah, I, know I'm forget, I know I'm forgetting some. I'm definitely going with Jordan. I'd say Ali. Oh. Bill Russell. Bill Russell? I don't know if he'd be in my top five. But he was... He was he, you know who I think... This is not, not playing either, by the way. Off the cuff. Yeah. You know what I, I think is was very influential? Who? Allen Iverson. 
Oh, yeah. I think he was influential on and off the court. I don't know why. But. His fashion. He went on ring, so he don't get talked about a lot. Yeah. His fashion, his image was was criticized, but then they changed the dress code, changed the image, and they relaxed the dress code, and everybody dressed like that. It's so. Yeah, this how it's funny how things reinvent itself. All right, so now Dude, that was hard. Let's well, let's do this because next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna ask you to give some business advice. Successful businessman like yourself should be able to help out in that department. Um, well, maybe you want to give a short intro um, <laughs> of who you are, where you come from, how you end up here. In less than a minute. Uh, let's see. How can I start? Let's see. My previous life, I played sports. I uh, played in college at Northwestern University, uh, Big Ten school, just north of Chicago. Worked for a couple of large banks, in particular Chase Bank and um, Citibank and different roles there. Then started working in technology and took off from there and never looked back. Um, made some great friends. And built a lot of great relationships. And in regards to being successful in the business, uh, don't be scared to fail. And and think, think big. Have a plan. Think big, and work backwards. If that makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, Google it. <laughs> Thinking backwards is very key to unpacking and resolving a lot of issues. And if you're trying to go. Venture off to your own business. Don't do what people are already doing. Do something different. And this is an introduction show, so we don't really have a lot of topics. Or, we got a lot of drinks, though. We got a lot of drinks. We're smoking, you know. We don't got no format or nothing. We just do an introduction. Me, myself, I'm Malik XO, formerly known as Pierre. Formerly known as P. Diddy, better known. What about Casanova? As Casanova. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your local. Well, where did Casanova come in? Well, you know how strippers have their stripper names? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I developed a name for when I go to the strip clubs. Mm -hmm. They had their own name, I had my own name. I just felt it was only fair. You should have asked me, I should have asked you all the top five. No, you should ask me what my top five stripper names? Adult entertainment venues. What is your top five? Oh wow. Strip clubs. Uh, old or new? Old or new. Even if they went out of business. Ooh. You know what number one better be? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got this this is actually a harder question than the uh, the other two questions actually. So um sorry for being long winded here. Uh in New York there was a spot called Sue's Rendezvous. It was freaking amazing, right? This is number one. No, number that got, that got to be that got to be five. The setup was great. Um, that was up in Yonkers. If you know where Yonkers is, like where DMX is from, it's freaking phenomenal. But if you're uh, in New York, go to Starlet. Starlet's great, great looking ladies, best looking Latinas. Are we speaking to life. a strip club connoisseur? Yeah, yeah, yeah I think so. I guess you can say that. All right, next on the list. Um, the office in Miami. <laughs> the office. The office is about the size of. You put two cars together, about that size. Small, intimate environment. Hmm. Great, great layout. Um, let's see. That's wings four. any good? Wings, 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 wings okay. Wings okay. Hmm. Booby trap on the river in Miami. Hmm. And when they bring the A team out, it's um follow them on Instagram. Miami coming in twice. Yeah. Let's see. Um, we got. Magic City, so on Monday nights, the Wings, they make you wait for a while, too, so. That's in Atlanta. Don't go, yeah, Magic City in Atlanta. Yeah. Don't go to Magic City hungry. Like, you use the Wings as a snack, because you go there hungry, you're going to get mad, because they're going to take you 25 minutes to get the Wings. Got them lemon pepper things. Freaking hate it. The Lou, oh my God. They it's got them amazing. Amazing. Um, let's see. I'm trying I'm trying to think of a 1, a 1B. I got my 1A. Let me think of Houston. Uh, the treasure, treasure was Nothing good. in oh, Chicago? 
No, no, you no, no. In Chicago, you come out, you go see the Bean when it was here, and you go get some good pizza. Go to some museums, aquariums, take your butt home. Yeah. Uh, Dallas ecstasy. Hmm. Had that that huge pole up there where the young lady fell and like hit her face. Yeah, that, that that's a good spot. Be Wild Beach too, by the way. Phenomenal. That's a great. Mm. That's that's a that's a one. It's a one C. One B. No, nothing in Vegas. No. Dallas gentlemen. DGs. That's a lot of strip clubs. One A is Follies. Follies. Oh man, that was a great spot. It's not. It's closed now, but it was just a great, great time, great environment. I, I, I was see, I would see men there. I see women there. You'll go there with the boys. You'll go there with the, the girls. Go there. Yeah, just a great time. You know, great um, buffet. He ate there. I didn't Mac eat there. and cheese was delicious. I didn't, I didn't eat there. He ate there. Um. Oh, you know what? They got another strip club that you need to check out, actually. Hmm. Um, one second. I don't mean to get on the phone here. Let's see. Go ahead. It's in Atlanta, actually. I don't even know how we got on this subject. Uh, I was introducing myself. Yeah, your, your name. Oh. Hey, you know what? If some of you old, old people are watching this and you want to see something that's quite interesting, go to the Claremont Lounge in Atlanta. I've never been there. I've, ho I've heard about it. It's like... Senior citizens of strip clubs. Really? Yeah, I'm not going there. So, recommend you guys go there once. I'm not going there. What are you trying to tell me? 65 year olds in there shaking their ass? I don't know what Pearl and them doing there, but hey, check it out. All right. Hey, might be worth your while, man. But yeah, there are a lot of adult entertainment places out here. Some good ones, not some good ones. That's mine. There are some that I miss too, of course. From strip clubs to politics. <laughs> Ain't that something? A lot of good meetings take places in strip, in clubs. strip clubs. A lot of politicking is done in the strip clubs. I've club. seen, I've taken some customers out to strip club meetings. In Chicago, deja vu, by the way. Mm. What's your sales advice for people? Listen. Hmm. Okay. Don't be focused on uh, selling your product if you're trying to sell something. Learn how your product helps the other person or the other company. Um, know what the overall landscape of what that industry is doing. Like for example, if it's um, if it's if it's uh, if it's sports, like like the NFL. Okay, how generative AI is helping the NFL make better, faster decisions, like stuff like that. Like if you're in the, the landscaping business, all right, what can you do to help customers? You know, what what can you do to help customers? And uh, as I mentioned earlier, think things, figure things backwards, think backwards, and look at the big picture. So think big. Uh, don't be scared to fail. Facts. Uh, but have a plan as well. Mm. So a uh, quick example, no one to sound long winded here. Uh, if I want to be a PR person, if I say, hey, I want to be a PR person, I'll work for a PR company and learn how they're doing the business and then go branch off and uh, do my own thing. So I basically get paid training. Ah. Versus the chances of me just saying, hey, you know what? Uh, at this job, I'm going to do my own PR thing. The chances of me failing is up, increases by 75 to 80%. So learn, fail, and somebody else is dying. Then once you get on your own, you can do your own thing. And then you can have a successful company, and then you can sell it. Great Just advice. Like Great advice. And then y'all can tell us how it went, and you can buy us drinks. So... Politics. <laughs> Where should we start? What do you think about the immigration problem in Chicago? I can tell you what I think about it. Not to sound. What's the appropriate word? Why is it? 
why are why is Chicago like the so years ago um, in Cuba they were dumping immigrants and I hate to say this about people they were dumping immigrants in Miami mm -hmm. it was close close thing there why is Chicago why why are they dumping people in Chicago I mean, I'm sure they're doing it in other cities as well why are they dumping people in Chicago with no plan it looks like it's freaking tent city out there. Because Chicago is a sanctuary city. And so now the the crime rate is pretty high as it is in Chicago. Then now you bring immigrants that don't I mean, no no papers, no there's there's a job shortage in Chicago. They're gonna come in and take up jobs that should be that people in Chicago really need, actually. Uh, so I'm just well, thinking about from that that standpoint. Then you look at the crime factor. Then okay, they're going to be doing you know God God knows what. Uh, it should have been a plan. You can't say just come on, come on here, we can hold you, and then not have a plan. Well, me being your local conspiracy theorist, I'm sure there's some type of conspiracy behind it. You want to know why? Because if immigrant, first of all. You supposed to seek refuge during times of war or times of hard times, tough times. This is not supposed to be a continuous thing. This has been a continuous thing. Not just Mexicans, talking about Venezuelans, Colombians. Colombians. All coming into the United States. Now you somehow get into the United States. I don't know, you know what I'm saying? Like I don't know what border patrol is like. But I know the United States spent a lot of money and take a lot of tax dollars. Come on, I'll check. For these type of things. They get into the country. Get into Texas. Now, Texas is going to spend money to bust them to Chicago. And then, then what? Is this like a bottomless pit? All right, I live in Texas then. <laughs> That's why a lot of people move to Texas. So. All right, I live in, if I know that, like, okay. Well, you my can, question they, is. They want to be here? I might live there. If you got money and resources to bus them to Chicago, why don't you just send them back to Mexico? Put them on that same bus with the same resources and change their you navigation from Chicago and take them Border Patrol, right El Paso. That way. That's why I'm sure it's a conspiracy. It's a conspiracy. Athlete. Somebody wants these immigrants to keep coming into this country and take jobs. That song that they play at, at the beginning of every football game, they say a, they say a word okay. called the the land of free and the home of the brave. I guess they really take that literal to a literal sense. The land of free and the home of the brave. Come here and be free and do whatever it is that you want. Hey, look. Something's going to have to give, man. So you got this election coming up. Which they are. What, what's the ages of those two people? 200? Close to it. Probably up there. Um, what, do you think, what do you think of the job they've done? They've done. I haven't seen the VP. I've seen her on. I, I've seen her like maybe. Talking about the debate? No, just in general. As a, as a job. They've oh, done. they've done a terrible job. Everybody knows they've done a terrible job. I don't see how they win again. I mean, I'm not. They won't. They not won't win. Picking again. a side, but just truth hurts. I mean, they're not gonna win again. They are in trouble. That's why they're doing this witch hunt on Trump right now. See, I don't really care either way, so I can speak honestly and brutally. And the Democrats, the liberals, are some corrupt bastards, and they are now. Trying to do anything they can to make Trump, you know what I'm saying, not credible so that they won't vote him back in. But they can't stop it now. But then remember, the guy that they want to run, this crazy dude down in Florida, now he crazy. <laughs> now his ass is crazy. If you live in Florida, you know who I'm talking about. His ass is crazy. Well, they won't. They He, he can't be Trump, though. That's the problem. And you know what the conservatives are going to do at the end when it gets down to 
the nitty gritty and they're going to panic because they're going to like, we can't have Biden them in there again. They're going to run. They're going to back up Trump. It's going to yep. be Trump versus Biden. And Trump's going to win. Like, because Biden is 89 years old or some shit. He can't yeah, barely Trump, talk. Trump hauling ass right behind him, shit. Well, I, hey, I'm going to say this. Trump is in much better shape like, than it's, Joseph Biden. Like, um, they had Mitch McConnell. He was having seizures and stuff on the job. Like, it, it Ooh, should be Trump a... Biden? No, um, McConnell. Biden? He's the director. Oh, of, McConnell. Run, yeah, run, yeah, run the Senate. Yeah. So, um, I think it should be a cap on how long somebody should be in office. Like I can't have you out here trying to make a country decision at at freaking um ninety six years old. I didn't even make a decision. Was it somebody? Are they just puppets? I think when when you're when you're a seasoned veteran, you get to cachets and make make certain decisions. Got some cool somewhere. Yeah, exactly. But um, yeah, it's gonna be. You know, some people they're gonna vote. They're gonna vote whatever political party they vote, regardless who is running. Yeah, they're gonna vote. People. You know, Democrat, Republic. I know some family members. That's that's how they operate. But then those those are people in between. Look at the person. Yeah, I and that's the, the decision that you know the I millions of it. us in the country has to make a decision on. I think. I don't really care, but I would vote for almost anybody over Joe Biden. Any independence. <laughs> no. I hope he. Oh. If Donatello from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles ran against Joe Biden, Big Bird, the Hamburglar, <laughs> the Hamburglar, oh. Elmo, and then it, if. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting. He's right? old man and he's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's going to be. Um... It's, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting, and see who's gonna come. Uh, who's gonna run against Uncle Joe? We'll see. <laughs> Uncle Joe. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Grandpa and, Joe. I mean, you 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 look at things where like Uncle Joe's um, you say Uncle Joe, Joe Biden um, his his kid is getting indicted for, uh, um. Well, I've I, I read, I read on it lately. I'll say gun charge or something like that. Something, yeah, something he. Crazy. They basically tried to. He tried to plea out, and the judge, not a good look. The judge was like, "No, like when you when you look at the headline, when, it's going to say Hunter Biden, son of President Joe Biden. It's not going to say, hey, Hunter Biden, blah blah blah." I mean, you Hunter, know the case of, was yeah. bad though when the judge say, "No, nah, you can't plea out. Like, yeah. it's that bad." Like. That's I'm not even gonna accept your plea. Like, That's he it. must have did some shit. You know you're a crackhead, right? Yeah, I heard stories. Yeah, I heard stories. Well, the irony. We shall see. Biden being so tough on drugs, and his son turned out to be a crackhead. Damn. The world works in mysterious ways. In mysterious ways. ways. Shit. That's tough. That's nasty work right there. Man, I appreciate you having me on, man. And um, you know, once we get full up and running, yeah, I'll, you I'll know, pop back yeah, in. Yeah, we're gonna do a real thing. This is my intro show, you know. We had to walk on water real quick. <laughs> um, yeah. Walk yeah. on water. Um, you gotta tell the people what walk on water means, by the way, at some at some point. At some point, yeah. At some, at some point. point we'll get to that. Man, not tonight though. They might not be ready for that. But um Yeah, we are signing off. Um let me get a little drink, a little smoke, maybe poke, you know. It is what it is. I'm so, out. the word of the day, truth hurts. Expensive pain. <laughs> <laughs>